summer, a time when many of us head to the beach. However, last summer the beach didn't seem as inviting after a boy had his arm bitten off by a seven-foot bull shark early in the season. A wave of hysteria followed that swept the media. The truth is that the number of attacks last year was fairly normal. A low attack figures have increased over the years. More people are entering the water for recreation, increasing the chances that somewhere shark and human are going to be in the same place at the same time. In effect, most shark attacks are actually accidents and are very rare. Even when all the conditions are right, the chances of an attack are very small. We don't live in water. We aren't a part of the shark's environment. Therefore, we aren't a part of its natural diet. Our natural predators are lions, hyenas and leopards. If humans really were a part of the shark's diet, then there would be millions of attacks, most of them fatal, with the victims being eaten. This is not the case. Such consumptive attacks are very rare. Most shark attacks are what is known as bump and bite. The shark bumps the person, sometimes mistaking part of them for a food item and taste testing it. When it finds it's not its natural food, it leaves. Most shark attacks at the beach happen from sharks in the three to five foot range, just like these shown here. An attack from one of these usually costs a few stitches. A bump and bite from a great white might be fatal, but not as often as you might think. Three quarters of people who are attacked by great whites survive. It seems we're not as tasty as seals, they're natural prey. Let's explore the mind of fish a little. Look at the shark as just another predatory fish, behaving just like a bass or pike. Bass live in fresh water that is often murky. They must use all their senses to catch the little fish they eat. Predators sense smell, vibrations, and flashes that indicate a weak, wounded, or dying fish. They also use smell to find bleeding or stressed fish. As they get closer, sight will begin to come into play. This is why many fishing lures use a flashy spoon that wobbles, vibrates, and flashes. Here you can see a bass hiding under a pier. Watch what happens when the diver wiggles his finger. The finger flashes and vibrates. The fish's predatory instincts are excited, making him want to attack, just like a cat with a piece of string. At sea, prey fish will often come into the shallows for protection, as well as to feed and to reproduce. Predators soon follow behind them. To a shark, the splashing of swimmers and the flash of the underside of a foot or hand mimics the vibration of weak or injured fish. It would then take a bite instinctively usually letting go as soon as it realizes its mistake. Now let's apply shark sense to see how we can help ourselves enjoy the beach safely. Avoid swimming around dawn or dusk. This is when predators are most active. Avoid swimming when shoals of bait fish are in the water, especially if the water is murky. Avoid wearing flashy jewellery that may resemble a fish. Avoid splashing and thrashing around like a weak or injured fish. Wear shoes such as wetsuit shoes or sandals. Most bites are to the feet as small sharks scour the bottom. Shoes will also help protect you from stepping on spiny fish such as catfish. Avoid bathing in areas where sharks may gather, such as at points or behind sandbars. Avoid swimming alone or being separated. If you see sharks feeding, leave the water calmly and quietly. Avoid swimming where people are fishing, especially if they're using chum. At the end of the day, remember, the risk from sharks is very small. You are 80 times more likely to be killed by lightning. To put the hazard from sharks in perspective, this is a sign from a Mississippi National Park. It warns about stingrays, catfish and jellyfish. Sharks are not even mentioned. Most important of all, go to the beach and have fun.